FTX is about to liquidate $3.4 billion worth of cryptocurrency and in today's video I am going to discuss the impact that this could potentially have on the market and talk about what it means for your portfolio. This is one of the biggest liquidation events that we've had over the last year so it's definitely worth talking about today considering some of the biggest tokens in the market for example Solana, Bitcoin, Ethereum and Aptos are at stake. And after we talk about the ramifications of this liquidation event, I want to talk about my weekly watch list because this is a Monday video. So I still want to bring to you the coins that I'm watching most this week, some of which have something to do with FTX um, and potentially could be presenting opportunities both on the long side and the short side this week. So it's going to be a massive week in the markets. There are some major events I want to talk through, uh, especially on Wednesday with CPI, Token 2049, which I think is going to cause even uh, further volatility in the market. But first, let's talk about this liquidation stuff because this is obviously the big story. So let's get straight into it. Old coins clearly bleeding today and bleeding this week um, because the market, I mean, is, has generally just been risk off. But then you have this happening in tandem with additional sell pressure coming onto the market. And of course, the old coin market is not going to react um, too strongly to that. And I also think we're seeing a bit of a de-risking um, ahead of what is a pretty volatile week, obviously with CPI data, PPI data, retail sales data. I think the market doesn't want to go into this week like super heavy alts at least um that's what it's telling me uh via the price action so clearly you know the biggest event is this li ftx liquidation event so let's talk about what it could potentially mean so just um to kind of you know contextualize this for you ftx essentially as you know went bankrupt and in order to repay its creditors so these are the victims of the downfall of FTX. So these are the people that had, um, you know, counterparty agreements with FTX. These are people that had exchange accounts with FTX. These creditors need to be paid back to some extent, although they're not going to get back all of their funds to some extent. Um, you know, the money that they had uh, either deposited in the platform or in deals with FTX. And in order to do this, they need to liquidate a bunch of their existing holdings because it's not like FTX had zero. They had some altcoins, actually $3.4 billion worth of altcoins and Bitcoin and Ethereum still in the platform when it went down. So they still have some assets that they need to recoup. And what we actually got today was an official filing um, from the United States Bankruptcy Court for the District of Delaware, which breaks down the entire portfolio of FTX and the total scope of assets that we have that they have to liquidate. And we found that it's not just crypto. They have um, also 0.8 billion in government recovered assets. They have 1.1 billion in cash. They have also properties. They have, they have you know, $200 million worth of property in the Bahamas. So it's not just crypto, but of course, as you know, crypto enthusiasts and crypto traders, I think the most relevant piece of information is the top 10 digital asset holdings list that we got, which comprises all the assets that FTX currently holds and is planning on liquidating. So here is the list. It's $1.1 billion worth of Solana. It's $560 million worth of Bitcoin. It's $192 million worth of Ethereum. It's $137 million worth of Aptos, XRP, Bit, STG, and then you've also got wrapped Bitcoin and wrapped Ethereum. So I want to talk about Solana first because I think this is clearly the standout here. It's the altcoin with by far uh, the most holdings on FTX because they were one of the principal investors and market makers behind Solana and Solana clearly reacting really badly in terms of price. So is Solana going to keep going down further? Is a billion dollars of Solana going to hit the market and really impact price? Well, the first thing that I want to say is not all of this Solana is liquid. In fact, um, a, a large majority of the Solana Solana that FTX was invested in is actually vesting or, you know, staked Solana that isn't liquid or available to them. So as you can see in front of you, a large percentage of the sole supply is actually vesting until the year 2028. So they do have some liquid Solana that they can sell, but it's unlikely to be that $1.16 billion figure that's, that's floating around that's going to like instantly impact the market. The other thing to note about the impact of this liquidation event is that they do have a cap that they can sell weekly. So on Wednesday, the court is going to either approve or deny the liquidations. Now, by all reports, uh, I assume that the court is going to approve the liquidations of crypto assets, but they will approve it with a certain cap. So a cap meaning they can only sell up to a certain amount of cryptocurrencies per week. This is to mitigate the negative effects of additional sell pressure coming onto the market in terms of price for digital assets. So what we'll likely see is a $200 million cap that they are allowed to sell every single week. And some weeks that could potentially be as low as $100 million, which prevents them from dumping a 
a billion dollars of tokens onto the market. But when you consider they have $3.4 billion worth of tokens, and when you consider probably half of that, uh, just to pick like a number because we don't have the exact number is staked, then they've only really got like, you know, $1.7 billion worth of tokens that like, let's say that's liquid, um, and that could be sold over like a six to eight week period, depending on, on how fast they do choose to sell. The other thing to note is that, especially for Solana, um, there will be a lot of OTC deals. So obviously like FTX wants to get the best possible result for the creditors. And um, we actually see Galaxy is in control of the liquidation proceedings here. And they want to get the best possible price for the creditors, meaning that if there's an OTC opportunity, so an over-the-counter deal that they can do, which impacts market price less, because it would impact the market price severely if they just dumped onto the market, then they're going to choose that route, um, like the, the route of least resistance or you know the path of best result uh, for the creditors. So there's a very good tweet here by Chief um, Ingza that says market is trying to get ahead of the FTX estate sales that could be approved this week on the 13th. Obviously, that's why we've seen a lot of old stumping. That's why we've seen Solana dumping severely. The total amount of sol available for sale isn't transparent, but best estimates are something like 17 mil liquid sol that can be sold. So that's, you know, still in the minority of the total amount of sol we saw on their balance sheet um, with a large portion of the total holdings locked for some time. Funnily, enough this news was made public weeks ago yet only now a derivative trade is reacting we can see that with Sol breaking down from its key support level at the 1947 region galaxy can achieve a far better price um if they're methodical with the sales via otc deals the market is obviously getting ahead of the sales but if funding stays this elevated it's not going to be easy for shorts to hold their positions because it's very expensive for shorts right now they're paying due to the funding rates to actually be short because everyone is wants to be short it's kind of becoming a crowded trade while Galaxy takes its time. So kind of what he's saying there is, look, Galaxy's going to take its time and likely do OTC deals. Um, and, you know, it's going to be hard for shorts to hold on given the crazy funding rates. Justin Sun also came out and said that he would, um, that he's contemplating an offer for token holdings to reduce selling impact on the crypto community. So kind of uh, alluding to the fact that he might be doing an OTC deal. So in terms of Sol's technical structure, what am I seeing? Well, clearly I'm seeing a major breakdown and this breakdown currently does have a target given, you know, the major horizontal support level at 15 to $16. You do have lower targets at $10 and eight to 10 is that last range from the the FTX low during, you know, the whole liquidation saga, um, and so on that you guys, you know, know so well about by now. And that deviation brought us down to around $8. So those, those are your lower targets, but for now you do have support at $16. This may actually end up being a dip that I personally like get involved in from a long perspective, probably not leverage long. Um, but I will probably look at some sort of spot long over the next day or so, uh, if the market starts to show signs of reversal, because I, I do believe that like the market's panicking and oftentimes with these events, the the kind of sell the, um, you know, buy the rumor, sell the news theory plays out, which basically means a lot of people end up piling into trades before the event. And then when the actual event happens, aka the liquidations, the market actually responds because it's already baked in the potential sell pressure coming onto the market ahead of time. And we're seeing that pile in with, you know, extremely aggressive leverage, which is exhibited by the fact that open interest is rising across Solana as well. So that's basically my take on Solana. The take of the re on the rest of the assets, well, I mean, Bitcoin can handle even 560 million dumping on the market tomorrow. Sure, it'll drop a little bit, but it can handle it. Ethereum can no doubt handle it as well. Aptos, um, kind of like Solana, has a lot staked as well. So probably on face value, it's very scary. 3.4 bill worth of assets dumping onto the market. Oh my God, prices are going to crash. But in reality, there's a lot of nuance here that although, you know, there is... Um, concrete sell pressure, and although that is going to impact the market, it may not be as much as investors are thinking right now. But of course, you know, we can't discount the fact that additional supply in, be in bearish market conditions is generally going to have some sort of negative effect. I just think the negative effects are being like very rapidly priced into the market right now, which makes it kind of like a very overcrowded short trade. That's my opinion. So for the rest of the video, I want to get into the week ahead because there are some massive dates this week, which I think are going to cause even further volatility. And then I also want to get into my altcoin watch list because I've I've got some tokens that I am looking to long in the face of adversity um, and also a token that I'm looking at shorting in the face of adversity. So a couple different trade opportunities and yeah, just things that I'm buying. You guys know I do these Monday streams. If you do like, you know, this style of show where I go through my tokens for the week, make sure you smash the like button and let me know in the comments below because I do want to continue with these shows if you guys are enjoying them, of course, like the Monday watch list shows. So just to kind of go through what we are looking at for the week, we have the FTX liquidation approval, of course, on Wednesday, like we just discussed, probably going to get approved with that 200 mil cap. 
Also on Wednesday, Wednesday's a massive day, by the way. Biggest day in the market I've, I've seen in a long time. Wednesday has the US CPI data as well. Going to be interesting to see whether inflation remains hot. I do think the market is pricing in a slight uptick in inflation. So I don't know even if there is an uptick, whether that's totally indicative of like the trend, considering this is, yeah, like being anticipated by the Fed and by the market. But let's just see how severe it is. I think you don't want like a major uptick, like a slight uptick in line with expectations, I think would be okay. Um, but of course, you know, inflation getting hotter is not great because that gives the Fed somewhat more of a license to continue hiking rates. And of course, risk assets want that pivot that we've been talking about for months and kind of is getting delayed and delayed and delayed. But the market does anticipate still, um, judging by, you know, the CME probabilities that we will get a rate cut in towards June next year. So that's kind of what the market's pricing in right now. Anything to kind of, um, you know, sway that prediction would impact prices materially. But I, I don't know if CPI will be a major shock, but I guess we'll wait and see for Wednesday. Uh, also on Wednesday, Wednesday is one of the biggest conferences of the year, if not the biggest, especially for like altcoins. Uh, and that's token 2049 in Singapore. I'm actually going. So if you go, if you're going, come say hi. Rand's going, Sheldon's going as well. It's going to be amazing. But you know, it's weird. Conferences are notorious uh, for crypto dumps. And it's so funny that we're getting the market dumping, you know, today ahead of a conference. It's just like so typical of a crypto conference to have like a dump. Uh, I don't know. But for some reason, every single crypto conference seems to result in a dump. Um, and then on Thursday, we have PPI and retail sales data, some more major macro data for the market as well in what is, in my opinion, going to be a pretty volatile week. So if you are a day trader or just interested in trading at all, this is going to be your week. I think maybe your time to shine because we know volume recently has been pretty much dead. Now you're going to get an opportunity to trade with like um, you know, excess volume. And we've seen also Bitcoin have its biggest volume day in the last um, three weeks. So we are seeing some volume stuff to come back in the market. Even the major caps, like namely Solana, of course, off the back of, you know, a lot of FTX speculation is starting to get some um, uptick in open interest and volume as well. So in light of that, if, if you are a trader and you do want to trade um, and you're looking for somewhere to trade, I recommend if you're looking for a DEX um, to trade on Gtrade because they've got most of the major pairs. They've got Sol, they've got Bitcoin, they've got ETH, they've also got Forex. They've got commodities as well, like gold and silver, um, and they're constantly adding, you know, new trading pairs all the time. And they've recently updated their UI. It's really, really cool and um, pretty intuitive to use. So there's a link in the description. If you want to trade any of these coins, you can choose your leverage on the left, as you can see. Um, you can toggle, you know, your stop loss, your take profit, which is so important to implement risk management in crypto, of course. And you can also set limit orders. So it's a pretty nice platform. You can go long or short, whatever kind of bias, you know, you have. And they also have this function called one-click trading, which essentially allows you without having to approve on your MetaMask wallet, you to transact so long and short just with one click of a button. That's hence why it's called one click trading. So that is a really cool feature that gains offers. And if you're interested in like a faster, more efficient trading experience, I would highly recommend using that, especially if you're a regular trader. So link in the description to gains. Now let's get on with the rest of the list. So in order to like contextualize um, this old coin list, first I want to go through Bitcoin and kind of say, look, although there is a lot of panic right now, um, and I understand panic into support, you still have to realize that we are at support. So if you go into the weekly chart and you just draw out simple support and resistance, we know um, that this area was major resistance back in August. It was major resistance in February this year. It, it flipped into support in June this year for the bank collapse fueled and, and BlackRock fueled rally um, up to 32K. And now it's also acting as support again. Now, of course, the more that a support level is tested, the higher chance it has of breaking down. So I totally get why investors are panicking, I guess, because, you know, your next targets are like 22 to 23K. If you look at the weekly and the monthly chart has, you know, that clear monthly close level at the 23K zone. But you still have to accept that we are on support and getting like overly bearish into support historically hasn't been like the greatest strategy. So just keep in mind, we are at support. If we do start to close below on the weekly, that is reason to panic. But something you may actually see is like us break below um, but then reverse towards the end of the week and start to consolidate. And then this acts as deviation. And technically that's a still a support level because obviously on the weekly chart, you're looking for that major close like you are on all high time frames. You're looking for a close under the weekly um, to confirm the bearish breakdown. So we may actually wick below and have deviation below. But what I'm more looking for is that weekly close. If we close above, then this is still a decent support level. And that actually could be a support buy. But I'm going to wait until maybe Saturday, Sunday until we start to get signs of, you know, whether Bitcoin um, wants to close below or close above. And as I said, volume is now starting to pick up a bit. So we're getting some better trading opportunities in the market. So what are some of the opportunities that I'm looking at? 
Well, I'm looking at a couple. Ethereum actually at a pretty key support level. That's something to keep in mind. It's at the same price as its 2018 all-time high. Um, pretty crazy to think that it's trading, you know, back at 2018 levels, albeit, you know, crazy blow off top levels. Um, but Ethereum's at support as well. So definitely eye that one alongside Bitcoin. But I want to talk about some of the altcoins now. It is the, you know, the Monday watchlist show. <clears throat> this is the show where I talk about alts. Rollbit's been an altcoin that, that I've talked about um, quite a bit on previous shows. They have shown their propensity to execute extremely high uh, amounts of trading volume across their casino and their sportsbook and also their perp decks. Interesting now we've got NFL season kicking off. Uh, we've also got, you know, soccer that's back. We've also got basketball, NBA. So their sportsbook, I think, will maybe see some like um, additional interest. We also have the crypto market maybe starting to wake up a bit when crypto trades with higher volume and higher volatility. That's obviously good for their perp product. So from a fee perspective, I think Robert's fairly strong, but it is victim to this general market sell-off. Um, so, you know, if you are a believer in Robit and you want to buy it, you know, slightly discounted prices, I think you're getting a better look now. Could it go lower? Absolutely. I think, you know, sub 10 cent Robit may be a decent opportunity to, to accumulate, but anywhere like after a major correction, if, if you're bullish on a project typically has for me at least been a, a decent accumulation strategy. So I'm, I'm going to look down to my position here, just to maybe a little bit around these levels and then probably a little bit lower under 10 cents. Of course, none of this video is financial advice, but yeah, I just want to be transparent with what I'm doing. Unibot, I think, fits this camp as well. Another altcoin that was extremely popular during the on-chain run-up has now seen a significant correction as well. And this comes in the midst of a competitor launching a similar product called Banana Gun. And it's kind of taken the winds out of the wind out of Unibot's sales a little bit and has resulted in a fair bit of FUD around, a fair bit of FUD online, which has resulted in a broader sell off. And then this happened in line with uh, shifting of market conditions and a drying up of on chain liquidity. And as a result, we see Unibot trading sub $100 and, and in the $60 range. It actually has quite a strong support at $45. But I think this is getting front run a little bit at the $50 zone. So for me, once again, this is an area where I'm interested. Uh, you do have to be careful of catching falling knives in crypto. But if you are kind of a DCA investor and you invest on like, you know, a fundamental premise behind a project, like for, for example, Unibot, I think you can DCA in slowly as long as you keep um, enough of a stablecoin balance on the side to continue lowering your average weighted buy price um, as time goes on. So you just got to be careful that you have enough liquidity and you don't like zap yourself out at 60 and if it goes to 40, you know, you're wrecked. Um, you got to be really careful. That's kind of why, like why with these coins, I try to avoid leverage because, you, you know, you probably would have been wiped out already. But yeah, Unibot and Rollbit definitely looking out after their big corrections as like decent buys. DYDX is an interesting one as well because although it has a major unlock, that's coming on December 1st. I don't think anyone is um, doubting the fact that this unlock isn't significant. The team has shown that it tends to make huge announcements like heading into these unlocks. That's what happened last time when their unlock was scheduled to take place. They like uh, announced their new V4 and then we saw the market actually respond positively into the unlock and then they of course delayed the unlock. But we are seeing some like interesting news come out the DYDX community passed the V4 um, adoption and migration to the DYDX chain proposal, which was published by Wintermute. So what's going to happen now is the community will adopt the open source software as the next version of the protocol and adopt DYDX as the layer one token of the new chain. So this is a like a positive advancement for DYDX, but I do expect the team probably has something up its sleeve heading into December. So it's going to be interesting because DYDX is like one that I want to add to my portfolio. I'm a huge believer of DEXs as like being a huge growth vertical next cycle. And I think DYDX is is taking quite a novel approach to, you know, solving the DEX dilemma and them launching their own chain, although it's certainly bold and ambitious, could have massive payoffs down the line. And I want some exposure to that narrative, but I also don't want exposure in the face of huge unlocks. So let's just see over the next couple months um, what developments occur, but I do think this could end up being like some sort of bullish unlock in the sense that they will come out with a big announcement before the unlock to kind of keep token um, pressure subsiding a bit. Let's just see what happens. I will be prepared on either side of this trade though. So if I do buy DYDX before the unlock, I'll also keep an adequate amount of capital for post unlock, keeping in mind that, you know, we still could see like a tangible sell off. I don't want to be totally like blind and be like, oh, bullish unlock, because it may not be a bullish unlock and you got to be prepared for either eventualities. So the next token I want to talk about, I'm taking the short side now. So, you know, in these Monday shows, I like to remain objective and not just give 
long setups and buy setups would also tell you stuff that I'm shorting because I think that it's, you know, great to be transparent and also play both sides of the market if there are opportunities. Um, especially someone like me that's like usually net long in crypto, like especially with my heavy like Bitcoin and Ethereum bags. Sometimes hedging short when an opportunity presents itself gives me uh, like a bit of market like delta neutrality, so to speak, that allows me to like, you know, hedge against significant long positions and exposure. Um, so I don't mind taking the shorts if there are an opportunity, but I tend to long more than I short in crypto just because that's, you know, I'm an investor and my goal long term is to bet on the future growth of the industry and try and find like niches and narratives that can outperform within the context of the growth of that industry. So we're going to get into that in just a sec. Um, before that, speaking of like growth, I think, you know, a big growth vertical actually lies uh, within one of our new show partners, which is Serenity Serenity Shield, which are offering, I think, a pretty cool um, novel product, which allows you to store data in a, in a safe and secure way. So think about this problem. Like, let's say something happens to you and you hold a significant amount of Bitcoin. How are your loved ones or your kids or your family like going to access that Bitcoin? Um, it's pretty much impossible, right? It's going to be lost on a ledger. You know, they're not going to be potentially able to find your seed phrases and it's lost forever. And I think this is a big problem in crypto, this problem of like inheritance. And even if something bad doesn't happen to you, I mean, what if you get into some sort of legal dispute um, and you're kind of sued for your crypto or there's liability on your personal assets? If you don't have like a, you know, secure system for storing that wealth and protecting that wealth and obfuscating that wealth uh, from the general public, then, you know, you can end up in a situation where you're screwed. There's, so there's so many applications I could go on and on um, for the benefit of a product like this. But Serenity Shield's really cool because it allows you to store your data, recover your data, and as I mentioned before, transfer your data. So if something happens to you, you can transfer it to beneficiaries um, on that, that you list out using the app. So they're building a very cool product and a product that I believe in uh, because I, I believe that crypto exists for the very purpose of being able to self-custody. I mean, that's the beauty of Bitcoin coin, right? It's decentralized. You have custody over it. You have security over it. You have ownership and sovereignty over it. Um, and Serenity Shield is basically empowering you to be able to do that through their product, which is going to be a decentralized storage solution. So they aren't launched yet. You can't use the Strongbox product as much as I'd like to right now. Um, but what you can do if you're interested, and of course, you've got to work out whether this is something that makes sense, you know, for you and your investing goals, um, is get involved in their in their pre-sale round, which is their round three, which is taking place for another two weeks. So Search is going to be the governance token of the platform. It is launching at a 0 0.23 price with a 15% TG and a one month cliff. So if any of this stands out to you and, and you know, you want to research further, I highly recommend um, checking them out in the description below, learning more about the product. And if you want to get involved in the pre-sale, you can, uh, I'm not shilling the token and saying that you have to. Um, but if you are interested, I thought it would be like remiss of me if I don't present you the opportunity uh, to check out the project because I think it is a cool project. And that's, you know, the reason why we partner with them. And I'm looking forward to using it once it launches and seeing their ecosystem evolve over time. So link in the description to Serenity Shield if you want to check it out. Now, I mentioned that I was going to be talking about a token that I would, I'm interested in taking the short side of, and this is actually Polkadot. Now this trade is starting to become a little bit more public as people start to talk about it, but I still think it's like an underrated uh, thesis here. Now, before I even get into the like thesis, can we have a conversation about Polkadot? Because like, think about Dot. Back in the last bull run, it was like the number one retail token. Like it was like Ethereum and then you had like Ada and Polkadot as like the two ETH killers, right? There was all the hype for their parachain auctions. Their parachain auctions took place after being delayed and delayed and delayed. And they actually took place towards the end of the bull market, not, you know, during peak hype. And then they took place and then barely any dApps ended up launching, barely any traction ended up happening on the retail side. Um, developer activity remained super strong and super sticky, but there was no one actually using the apps. And we kind of are now moving into an environment which to me looks like is going to be like, um, a very interoperable ecosystem, especially with like Cosmos, which is, you know, has a real composability focus. You've got layer zero launching, which enables you to like plug and play uh, different L1s together. And then you've kind of got Dot, which is like an isolated ecosystem that isn't necessarily like so interlinked and so composable compared to some of the other offerings that we're seeing in the market. So I've just got a question and I'm not trying to fight or like be bearish or anything, but fundamentally, do you believe, and actually genuinely let me know in the comments below, do you believe in the .ethos? Because personally, I like find it hard to justify 
with the developments I'm seeing in crypto that the dot model is the way forward. And maybe I'm wrong and maybe I've got some sort of technical, you know, limitation um, that is not allowing me to understand, you know, how dot fits into the context of the crypto ecosystem in general, but I am struggling to understand it. And I mean, fundamentals aside, there are a few interesting developments happening on the more shorter time frames, which kind of made me present this short option. And that's the fact that there's kind of a big unlock taking place. So almost $100 million, $400 million is going to be returned to users who participated in the first round of the parachain crowd loans on October 24th. How many will be dumping after two years of disappointing activity? And there's a very funny tweet here saying, look, there's virtually, it's virtually at an all time low price wise. It's on the brink of um, the biggest unlock ever and nothing is happening. Now, price-wise, it's not on an all-time low in dollar terms, of course not, but in Bitcoin terms, it's been bleeding against it, and the chart looks horrible. It's pretty much making new lows um, all the time versus Bitcoin. So typically, when you're trading alts, you're looking for strength versus Bitcoin, because at the end of the day, if you can't beat Bitcoin, why are you in an altcoin? You may as well just be you know, in Bitcoin and be able to sleep at night. That's kind of a saying that I've had over the years. And for DOT, well, you wouldn't be able to sleep at night because you're Tokens are just bleeding into Bitcoin constantly. So given the fact there's an unlock and given the fact there's no strength, I think the short option definitely is presenting itself. Now, I'm not a TA expert. I don't have the exact entry, but I've given you the fundamentals. And if you're a chartist, definitely check this out on your charts. If the market continues to bleed and you're looking for the weakest coins, I think DOT could be one of them over the next month or so. And yeah, you've always got to try and identify strength and weakness in the market. We try and do a good job on this channel at identifying strength, but also identifying weakness can be equally as lucrative when it comes to trading. And DOT, I think, fits that bill a little bit when it comes to weakness. So just thought I would change things up by giving you um, uh, maybe a slight bearish one there. Now I want to talk about uh, one that I'm bullish on to wrap up the video, and that's actually Fraxshare. Fraxshare is building a lot. And its price has been fairly resilient in the midst of like a broader crypto sell-off because the Frax founder, Sam Kaysman, who I have, you know, great respect for, just announced the kind of new uh, real-world asset treasury bill initiative that they're going to be launching. He says Frax V3, uh, which is their new initiative that's coming soon, has a unique system of managing off-chain risk that hasn't been built before. Our RWA strategy, unique uh, borrow AMM loans and debt system makes it so constant so that constant redemptions of real-world fiat or treasuries aren't needed to keep Frax V3 stable. Finraise PBC, which is one of their banking partners, is capable of holding US dollar deposits in FDIC insured intra-FI savings accounts and earning interest on those deposits. Additionally, it manages the mints and redemptions of Paxos and USDC stablecoins as required by the Frax protocol. The company may also hold, purchase, and sell United States treasury bills in segregated brokerage accounts. So if you know the concept of real-world assets, it's basically crypto treasuries can invest in real yield-bearing assets, for example, real estate, for example, treasury bills, earn an interest on those assets and the earnings from those assets can go back to token holders in some way, shape or form in the form of buybacks, in the form of staking yield, um, you know, in the form of fracks, it'll be more of like a yield bearing opportunity, but it essentially enables you to get exposure to real world assets on chain. And, you know, I've said for a long time, I think the merging of the real world and the digital world is going to create some of the biggest opportunities. And I am actively on the lookout for protocols that harness the power of real world assets. And Frax is definitely one of them. MakerDAO is another one. But from the investment side, Frax interests me more. And in terms of trading it more shorter term, you do have this V3 launch on the horizon. That could be like a more of a shorter term catalyst for Frax to perform. So I've got definitely got my eye out on that one. Speaking of real world assets, OpenX also has a real world assets program. I've actually been, you know, staking my OX tokens and I've been earning rewards, as you can see here, in the form of FMT and Judas tokens, uh, because basically they are kind of acting like a launch pad at the moment, giving airdrops to stakers. So OpenX, who are an official exchange partner of the show, um, they also have a launch pad and they partnered with 3AC Ventures and they have Razedex, which is a credit platform, and Metagame Plan, a platform also onboarded, which is involved with Khabib, you know, the UFC fighter, which tokens, rewards from those projects are going to be distributed to OX stakers. So that is one of like the value props, one of the reasons why I staked the token. 
to get access to their RWA pilot program as well as their you know launchpad projects and they're continuously onboarding projects onto the platform. Uh, I don't want to talk too much about token price, but it has dropped significantly. I'm speaking of Ox, by the way. So if you were kind of on the sidelines and are bullish on the OpenX ecosystem, you're getting you know a look at a, a discounted price now. But I don't want to give financial advice on whether you should or shouldn't buy. Um, that's totally up to you and that's totally your decision. Uh, I'm more here to talk about the product, which I think is a, a great product and exchange, as you can see in front of me, that offers perpetual trading on you know a lot of the biggest pairs in the market, but also some of the small pairs in the market that the DGENs like to trade like Unibot, like Pepe, like, you know, Bitcoin, which is the Harry Potter, Inu coin, SHIB, all of that like DGEN stuff as well. Um, and it actually allows you to access what would previously be illiquid assets that you may be holding in like a crypto wallet, like a MetaMask and put them onto the platform, deposit them, borrow OUSD, which is like the um, settlement token of the platform to be able to trade uh, against your assets. So illiquid assets like Pepe, you can actually use as collateral to trade against them like you would a stable coin on another exchange. That's pretty cool as well. Offers more flexibility, especially for the DGENs that um, like, you know, are holding a lot of these assets and want to speculate against their holdings. Maybe in this market, it's like not the easiest strategy to pull off, but hey, I think at some point users will really come to respect uh, that feature and the flexibility that it offers them. So if you want to trade on OpenX or get involved in any of the stuff that I talked about, there's a link in the description. Um, obviously not financial advice. And remember, if you're in like the UAE or America, of course, you can't use the platform. Make sure you, you're in a jurisdiction that you can use the platform before you choose to trade on there. Uh, and yeah, that is my watch list uh, for today's show. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. We talked about FTX. We talked about the coins I'm looking at. We talked about the market. If you like this format, um, I would appreciate smash the like button and, and next week we'll do it again. And yeah, this week I'm going to be at token 2049. So fairly preoccupied, but I probably will find time to stream or if not, I'll, I'll be recording tomorrow before I head off and I will prepare some shows for you guys. I do have a couple good ideas that I want, that I want to bring to you about what could be in store for 2024. Cause we do talk about a lot of short term stuff cause it's more engaging in the, um, you know, immediate future. But I think longer term, there are some bigger opportunities presenting themselves, especially lining up for Q1 uh, slash like early Q2 that I want to discuss maybe in tomorrow's or, or the day after the show. Cool. I'll see you in the next video. Have a lovely rest of your day and I'll see you later. Peace out.